Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we live full time in this North Star pop-up truck camper back here. It is getting pretty warm, so we're going to have to move locations pretty soon. And before we do, we're going to take advantage of it to do one of Elizabeth's favorite hobbies. Herping. Herping. If you don't know what herping is, because it sounds like the, the, the skin ailment, uh, it's not that. It is short for searching for herptofauna, which are just amphibians and reptiles, and it's a nerd outdoorsman hobby. But before we get out into the great outdoors and fry our pale white skin in this beautiful sunshine, we want to say thank you to Bob Wells and his crew uh, for, for doing a video with us and featuring us because we have seen more subscriber growth in the last two days than we have seen in six years. It's uh, been a crazy last two days seeing the views go up and our subscriber base go up and um, it, it feels like it was worth it to drive six hours to go interview with Bob Wells and meet him and uh, it, was, it was good. <laughs> Super awesome, awesome, awesome guy and crew behind the scenes yeah. not just on camera yeah um, so we want to say thank you to them and all our new subscribers but also thank you to you guys who've been around before the algorithm ever knew existed we just had a video hit a hundred thousand views and that's so to us that is insane most of our videos average a couple of thousand or so and so see a hundred thousand views in less than a week is we just want to get it out of the way how how excited we are and how grateful and thankful we are for that so now commencing the herping sequence i've been staring out this window of our camper uh, the last couple days as we've been preparing to move and i've been mocked by these giant lizards surrounding us and i think they think that i can't catch them but we're going to put that to the test today i'm not interested in most of the small <laughs> herps like this kind of salamander has a slightly different color variant than this one or this but these uh desert iguanas out here actually even they're big enough to like it piques my interest they're they're pretty cool and they pique the dog's interest <laughs> they're super fast and they only get active when it's like a hundred degrees or so which we're hitting we're getting around that temperature now so they're like everywhere yeah so we want to go see if we can put one on camera for you guys today and do a little herping uh while we're out here yeah Are you ready? Are you ready for adventure? Let's see. We're gonna ride out through the desert um, back here on our uh, bicycles and head out there and try to find some of these iguanas. But before we do that, we wanna show you what has been our neighbors for the last, I don't know, maybe six or seven months. And it's in this hole right here. And you can see this pile of uh, seeds and everything laying here, or what's left of the seeds is these ants that live here and they're not out right now but we hope we can show you to them when we come back when the sun goes down a little bit and they go back to work. They're harvester ants and their primary food source is seeds in the surrounding area and normally you kind of look over ants except for the fact that these ants create giant trash piles outside of their nest. They're called midden piles and they're everywhere. As people who uh, grew up primarily on the east coast uh, and who love to travel these ants is something that I think maybe people who live here probably overlook every day and don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, and that's why we love travel so much is it's even the ants are different when you go somewhere new. Like these ants, you, you watch them making a string of seed pods coming underneath your camper every morning and underneath your solar panels to bring back home. And then they eat the seed pods and then they Throw bring the, the rest and, yeah. and make little piles. And it's fascinating. And I think that's another reason we love travel so much and always being somewhere new is that even the small even the little minutia uh, around you is different and it's exciting. Like the creosote trees, we don't have these on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. the ev ev just everything being different kind of keeps you curious. These ants have been eating the seed pods of desert sunflowers. It's primarily the only thing flowering right now aside from the creosote bushes. And you wanna know what eats creosote bush flowers? Desert iguanas. Because it is almost 100 degrees today um, and we would probably sweat to death in this, in this heat with the sun right overhead, not a single cloud in sight, uh, if we didn't have a little bit of assistance. And today's assistance is brought to you by Fukari. This is the Fukari Taurus, and they specifically wanted us to test it because of these big, chonky tires. They said that they would want us to test it on off-road capabilities. So these tires are a little bit bigger than the bikes that we've been working with recently, but they have big old fenders and it's got a good size battery for some range. And uh, I think it can get us to some desert iguana habitat. I also like the design of the frame. It reminds me of a Ducati. It's got this steel <laughs> trellis frame and it's really cool looking. And as always, safety third, 
first rule being look cool, obviously. Second rule, know where you are. We know where we are. And uh, third rule, safety. Now let's ride. Hui. <laughs> She's already, you're not going. <laughs> okay, we forgot one thing. We forgot this one. We forgot Mona. Uh, she's very excited to go look for iguana. She loves to chase anything that moves. What we're gonna do, because it is 100 degrees right now, is put her inside the camper. And we're gonna keep her cool because on top of the camper we have a little AC system. So I'm gonna go fire up the generator. This little teeny tiny champion generator is surprising how well it runs our AC system. So then in here, we'll turn it on. Once it gets that compressor clicked over, it'll just sit there and hum along for about four or five hours. It feels super nice. So we'll put the dog in here. I know that she wants to come with us, but she will overheat so fast. Good girl. Go oh, on. There you go. We'll see you later. She's riding her little air bike. For a lizard hunting hike Through the sand and the rock These iguanas are in for a shock Still good! These drone shots are so cool and that sun above is so hot we are flowing through the desert she's about to shoot her shot oh shit there's one there's one there's one there's one okay you gotta get the camera I think we have spotted an iguana, so I just need to borrow the camera from up here real quick. And I think an iguana ran up here. Oh. There's a giant pearl. Somewhere in here. quick change on the cameras the GoPro overheated and then the iguana ran off and we're gonna go find Elizabeth I think she got it I think I heard her say she got it over here I did get it <laughs> oh gosh I had to be super careful because awesome. these guys drop their tails and so you can't grab it by the tail which makes it kind of difficult to catch but YouTube this is a desert iguana Super pretty, uh, you know, obviously not as big as the green iguanas that you think of in movies, but still a pretty chonky lizard. So they're, you know, this light brown color with this beautiful modeling on the side that kind of turns into dots on their big fat tails. This is about as big as they get, and um, even though they are large lizards, they are mostly herbivorous. So they eat the flowers and the leaves of stuff like these creosote bushes. Rarely do they actually eat insects, which is what people would think of for most lizards. Um, looking at this guy, um, it's hard to sex these lizards to tell if they're male or, or female. They're not really sexually dimorphic, meaning that the male and female uh, differ in appearance. They're pretty similar, but what both do have are these things called femoral pores. So femoral pores are these big glands on their femurs, or kind of in the region of their femurs, and they secrete hormones. Um, this specific lizard secretes hormones for establishing territory. So the weird thing about the femoral pores on desert iguanas is their like secretions are waxy and they can be seen in like the UV index. Um, so they think that these lizards can actually see in UV and recognize physical waxy secretions to establish territory, um, which is kind of gross, <laughs> but it's kind of cool. Not a lot of animals can see in the UV spectrum. We've done quite a few catch and cooks on this channel. This one's just gonna be a catch. <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna eat them. 
They've got these long claws and that's because they actually dig burrows, um, both for just sleeping and also for nesting purposes. So their burrows where they sleep are typically at the base of things like creosote bushes. And then during their mating season, which is only in about a month or so, they make more um, like sandy burrows kind of away from the base of roots. And they lay almost like perfectly round little eggs and only like eight at a time or like eight per year for um, each female. So they're not super big clutches for reptiles, but these lizards are super cool because they're out when all the lizards are not out in this area. They withstand much hotter temperatures than other lizards, which makes it cool to catch them during the day. Whereas other lizards, you have to go out pretty early in the morning or kind of in the evening because it starts to get really hot. As we've seen, even the ants don't want to be out right now. All right, we're gonna let this little guy go. And I think we're headed to go somewhere to swim uh, where he loves 100 degree heat. We like we to don't. be a little cooler. So I think we've got some water we're gonna ride the bikes over to and uh, take a dip and cool off a little bit because it is a scorcher out here right now. Say goodbye. So cool. Um, and I am very excited. I am super scared of lizards more than rattlesnakes or anything because these some of these bad boys can drop their tails. Most of them. And I find that um, horrific. And so seeing that is so horrific. It's horrific for the lizard and it's a terrible experience for both of us. So I'm so glad he didn't drop his tail. There, boom. Already gone. They quick. Chris isn't scared. It is disgust, utter disgust because when lizards drop their tails, it's the whole tail, like bone and all, and it wriggles around by itself for up to 30 minutes. And it's, it's pretty gross, honestly, to watch it flop around on the ground. He's back in his natural habitat. <laughs> back in there. Goodbye, little guy. Can the dog come? Yeah, I think she probably wants to come too. She needs to just get the dust off of her, if anything. That's true. All right, we made it back. Generator's back there, still humming. Let's see if a good girl would like to go swimming. Would you like to go swimming? And she's waiting by the door. Would you want to go for a swim? Man, that feels nice in there. That is like 60 degrees in there. There's oh. a good 30 or 40 degree temperature difference. Whoa. You know the rules, if you're going somewhere, you gotta put your clothes on. There you go. Oh boy, she, she already knows. She already knows. You ready? Let's go. Oh my gosh, the lake is beautiful. It's 96 degrees out, but feels like it's over 100. And now we get to jump in. Get our door bucket off. What we did not bring, we did not think about this, uh, is we do not have bathing suits. And the last video, I got told I look like I had a t-shirt, which I do. And also uh, my swimming shorts will be the same as last video, which is uh, cargo shorts, which someone told us they are called purse shorts and I like that a whole lot more so I'm gonna get me and my purse shorts into the water and I'm going in just like this You about done? I don't think so. No. <laughs> we'll probably be here for another 20, 30 minutes trying to get her tired out and cooled down. And uh, we'll ride the bikes back and see you back at the camper for some good old hot brown chow.
We've just arrived back, uh, still kind of wet and dirty, but what's cool when we came back is our friends are out now. And I'm very excited because our friends and uh, possibly an enemy have, have also made it back. So you can see here, um, these are our little buddies and you can see them carrying their little, their little pieces back. They're throwing away the old seed pieces and making this pile. But what I wanted to show you, as you can see, as these guys are carrying their seeds to and from their nest, they cross our solar panel. And I went to go move this solar panel and I wanna show you why we don't keep our shoes outside um, here in the desert. Is this little bad boy right here. <laughs> is, not, not so little. No, he's waiting for us under the solar panel. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh, it's so fat. Why is it so fat? I don't know if this one is pregnant. So we said that we were going to do a catch and cook with these scorpions. The problem is that um, we just have the one. Oh, he's gonna go to our friend's house. Be careful. We were going to do a catch and cook. That thing is so juicy. I can't imagine that thing exploding in my mouth. Oh, I mean, gross. I need for you guys to see the size difference. Gross, crunchy. Gusher, almost like a little mealworm or a cricket. Disgusting. Ooh, green. Got green, red. More green. So we're gonna make burger bowls. Uh, we we uh, we've been shopping at this awesome grocery store called Green Trees. If you're ever coming through Yuma, Arizona, it's like where they get expired stuff and discounted items, and we bought. I don't know, 25 pounds of ground beef. So we have a lot of frozen hamburger patties and we're gonna make burger bowls. So it's kind of like last week, taco rice. This is the same same thing. It is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of rice as the base, we're just gonna use lettuce and it's uh, pretty much just a, a hamburger. So I've got the grill going outside and we're gonna grill the hamburgers out there. They're super fatty hamburgers. They're like 80, 20 or something. So they shrink way up and it's a big fire mess outside. So I prefer doing those super fatty meat outside. You added yellow. Yeah, church did it up with a little yellow. Shoo! I keep adding all these colors because we get <laughs> we get hounded for making hot brown and not eating healthy enough. And you put enough colors together and what do you get when you add all the colors together? Brown. Brown. And it, it comes right back around to hot brown again. This is just gonna be brown. We also laugh when we get hounded in the comments for not eating healthy. Um, everybody has to remember, you see one 15 minute snippet of our life, not day-to-day. Uh, -day. You're not seeing what we eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Doing YouTube has really made me realize how much some people like to judge other people on yeah. anything. They'll, you'll get, we'll get, not saying any of you will, but we'll get super hateful comments of like, the the color of your shoes is wrong. You, you're horrible. Though. Idiot. Like, yeah. Just, they, insane, insane. Yeah. We've had people bring race into our cooking conversation yes. more than once. I just deleted two comments the other day um, anti, anti-Jewish comments in yeah. our, in our, what, how, what, how is anything we're doing could bring race into it? Like, I don't know. People are crazy. When you get, when you get food involved, well, when we made the matzo balls, people got, uh, yeah. I deleted it. So we usually don't delete comments, but it, when you go down that path, like you're going to get your comment deleted and like blown away at what some people will say when you start cooking. Yeah. This is the great out of the propane grill that I thought we were going to be using. Uh, we are out of propane. Um, so, uh, I always have a backup. So this is our plan C, you know, on candy adventures, two is one, one is none. Um, so we're down to, uh, actually plan C, but we're just going to cook it over the fire here, which will probably give it a better smoky taste anyway, even though I prefer to taste the meat, not the heat, <gasps> we'll make some exceptions. getting their dinner done, so are we.
So we beat the sunset, we got our food prepared, we got a fire going, and we're exhausted. I cannot wait to try this. I say try this like it's some exotic thing. It's a hamburger without the bun. Exquisite. Mm-hmm. It's exquisite mostly because I forgot that we were cooking the corn and the tomatoes on the stove, and I burned them a little bit, but that blackened flavor gives them that little char. a nice little bite. But this was a good um, kind of like last solid exploration video in this area, and now we're on to something new. Next video, we'll be packing up and leaving here and um, going, pr probably doing a lot of driving in the next video, getting to, getting to some different locations. And LTVAs, you can stay here. It's a, it's a portion of BLM land that you can stay for up to seven months yeah. at certain times of the year. And so we're at the end of that right now. So we have to go somewhere else and we got to go find where else we can stay. So we'll be, we're, we'll be on the computer all night tonight trying to figure out where we're going to be in our next video. So we'll see you guys then. I'm gonna crack a cold Keystone uh, and enjoy tonight and see you guys next video. She's riding her little air bike for a lizard hunting hike through the sand and the rock. These iguanas are in for a shock. <laughs>